The president's last words to reporters before leaving for his family vacation, already in progress, uh, were these. He said, Mele Kalikimaka, Hawaiian for Merry Christmas. Also, my favorite Christmas song in National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation. This family Christmas where the president grew up in Hawaii, I'm telling you now, will be one of the only recent vacations taken by any president in which no one complains that the president left town when he was supposed to stay in Washington to get stuff done. Because that's what the opposition party always says, right, when, when, when presidents go on vacation. But in this case, Republicans, I am guessing, will want Mr. Mr. Obama to stay away as long as possible, because in the lame duck period, he got a lot of stuff done. Harry Reid, Nancy Pelosi, the president, elected Democrats generally, saw their stars rise over the past 26 days because of this flurry of getting stuff done. But you want to know who had a stupendous month as well? Iraq and Afghanistan veterans, in the, words of the large, word, in the words of the largest organization of Iraq and Afghanistan veterans, IAVA, Iraq and Afghanistan Veterans of America, quote, lame duck comes up big for new vets. Iraq and Afghanistan veterans of America wanted don't ask, don't tell repealed. They got don't ask, don't tell repealed. They wanted the new GI Bill updated. They got the new GI Bill updated. They wanted fraud investigated at Arlington Cemetery. They got fraud investigated at Arlington Cemetery. They wanted compensation and health care for 9-11 first responders. They got compensation and health care for 9-11 first responders. They wanted the veterans' preference in federal hiring extended to hiring in Congress. They got the veterans' preference in federal hiring extended to hiring in Congress. They wanted the Defense Authorization Act passed even after Don't Ask, Don't Tell was split off from it. They got the Defense Authorization Act passed, and it's got a ton of important stuff for veterans in it. Veterans health care, traumatic brain injury, dealing with the problem of military sexual assault, and a lot of other stuff that veterans really wanted. They rolled into the lame duck session with all of those things still on their we need to get this done list, and they are rolling out of the lame duck Congress with all of those things done. It has been a huge, huge month for December. Uh, for it has been a huge, huge month this December for Iraq and Afghanistan veterans, uh, which is worth a high five. Can I reach you? Yeah, absolutely. New desk. I can barely reach you for the high five, Paul. Okay, I'll reach over. <laughs> Paul Rykoff is the founder and executive director of Iraq and Afghanistan Veterans of America, uh, himself a 9/11 first responder. Uh, so doing double duty here tonight. Um, Paul, congratulations, first of all. Oh, thank you. Why, why do you think you were able to run the table like this? You know, it was a team effort, and I think what we saw, a lot, of, a lot of talk has been around the politicians and how politicians led on this fight, but I think what you saw in the last couple of weeks especially is the power of activism mm -hmm. and, and the power of the American people getting behind educated, informed, coordinated activists and, and activism, and especially the use of social media. I mean, we wouldn't be able to mobilize this many people behind this many issues this quickly 10 years ago. So when all that comes together and we make the media pay attention and we make the American public pay attention, we can put pointed pressure on the right politicians at the right time and get things done. How does the social media translate to political pressure? Is it because it then gets picked up in mainstream media and that's what politicians are still paying attention to? Or are they directly watching what's happening in the social media world when they're looking for honestly, advice on what they ought to do on an issue. I think it's both, but you can also go to the average American and say, hey, if you take five minutes, you can make an impact in the lives of Iraq and Afghanistan vets. If you, you know, call your congressman on one of these issues, if you email five of your friends, if you donate some money, and that kind of grassroots mobilization, I think, was critical in, in all the major issues, and you saw that th throughout these issues. I mean, look, look at Don't Ask, Don't Tell as an example. I mean, it wasn't just the veterans uh, groups involved, all the gay rights groups involved, all the other groups that, that banded together and really focused like a laser on Congress at a critical time, and I really think that that's kind of the, the unsung story, the unsung heroes of these last couple of weeks were all those activists and all those activist groups in the last couple of weeks. On, on Don't Ask, Don't Tell specifically, you were, you were the only major veteran service organization to endorse repealing Don't Ask, Don't Tell. Did that, and your organization tends to be mostly younger vets compared with the other yeah, major yeah. VSOs. Did that cause any friction? Do you anticipate that causing any friction in the future between your organization and the other vets groups? I hope not. I mean, it's a generational divide. The, the average IAVA member is in their 20s. You know, the average member of, of the American Legion or, or the VFW is much older. Um, so, you know, we, we approach all these issues much differently, not just don't ask, don't tell, but traumatic brain injury, women's issues. There's a huge generational divide. Mm -hmm. And I think that, that our generation of veterans uh, looked at don't ask, don't tell as, as, as kind of something we needed to get done. Uh, we served around gay people. Many of our members are gay. Uh, you know, of course, there are folks who, who did oppose it, but there was a clear majority of our, of our members who, who wanted to take a stand on here. And I think we're on the right side of history, and I think our military is better off, and I think America is better off.
Paul, one of the things that you have talked about um, on this show in the past is uh, with this White House, even though you have felt broadly supported on policy issues, you're not at loggerheads with them necessarily on big policy issues, you have not felt like you had anybody to call uh, in the White House. You didn't necessarily have great access, great advocates, very close to power. Has that changed at all? I think it's changing. Okay. I think we still have, we'll still have a ways to go. And, and I want to see the president lining up things on, on veterans issues every month. Uh, when we come into the, the new session, we need to focus on unemployment. Our membership has about a 20 percent unemployment rate. Wow. The suicide rate is, is really accelerating rating at a scary rate. Uh, the Air Force numbers just came out this week, the highest rate of suicide on, on active duty in the Air Force in decades. So the president can do a lot with the bully pulpit. If you look at the suicide issue as an example, he can deal with stigma, he can encourage people to get help, and he can issue a national call to the American public and say, if you're a qualified mental health professional, your country needs you. Mm -hmm. Step up now and help us reduce the suicide rate. So he's done a lot, believe me, and we give him a lot of credit, but there's still a long way to go. I expect to be hearing um, that n the number on unemployment specifically that you mentioned, 20 percent unemployment among Iraq and Afghanistan veterans, uh, ought to be a national screaming headline. And I think the next time we are fighting about unemployment benefits, which will, I'm sure, be soon, uh, that's going to be a major issue. Paul Rykoff, founder and executive director of IAVA, Iraq and Afghanistan Veterans of America. Again, congratulations, man. Thank you. We're Thanks proud of it. Yeah, me Thank too. you.